Um, I'm here to play football. I got a team around me that handle my contract situations and you know my future and all that. So I, I'm focused on training. I'm focused on getting ready for the season. Um, you know, I'm on a plan with you know been talking to Coach Rabe and Todd and everyone. You know, um, like you said, I'm unavailable to practice out here. You know, if anyone will ask that, but um, I, I just been on a plan with them to focus on how much can I improve, you know, not just, you know, doing drills right now, but in the uh, film room, in the weight room or anything like that. So um, my focus is not on my contract. That's why I got a team around me to actually, they can focus on, you know, all the contract talk and whatever it may be, if it is um, contract talk. So, um, like I said, my focus is on football right now. Coach Williams said you're, you're not hurt. So if you're focused on football, how come you're not on the field? Because we are on, I, I kind of just said that me and Vrabe and them came to a plan where, you know, what they think best for me right now. And, you know, that's where I'm a player. And, um, you know, I, I believe in Coach Vrabe and I believe in Ty and them that, you know, since I've been here, they've been putting me in a great position to be the player I am today. So, you know, we just, I'm on a plan with them right now. So, it's odd for there to be a plan for a healthy player who hasn't been around not to be on the field unless it's over his contract? Well, I'm not, like I said, if it is by contract, I don't know because I'm not talking about, I'm not talking to them about my contract. I have a team placing that if it is by contract, they're going to talk about it with whoever upstairs. But like I said, Brave don't handle the contract. So um, I think, like I said, my job is to be a player, be a leader in the, not just on the field, but in the weight room and the, Lock, locker room or whatever it may be. So, like I said, I'm on a plan, and I'm sticking with it, and um, and I'll see you guys in camp. What have yeah. you done, Jeffrey, I guess, uh, over the last couple of months, maybe to kind of start gearing up for the season? Well, I mean, it's just been a lot of things that me personally that I want to work on to take my, take my game to the next level. And that, you know, if it's, you know, just trying to be more disruptive, get up the field more, you know, try to – keep my feet moving, um, not just in the run game or not just in the pass game, but also in the run game. I think a lot of uh, speculation around that, you know, I'm just working on a lot more pass rush, which I'm not. So I think that's been my biggest thing this offseason. Even in the run game, how can I keep my feet moving when I make contact and stuff like that? It's just a small detail that could take my game to the next level. And like I said, it's always, you know, good to be around, I guess, um, you know, I guess, for instance, my uncle who played in the league that could, you know, break down film with me, um, that could show me, okay, this is why you missed, you know, didn't make the play in the backfield. This is why you missed a sack. So I think that's just been my biggest um, thing this offseason. How can I speed my fit, footwork up? How can I, you know, take the small things to take into my game to actually make them, you know, tackle for loss of sacks? So. Where does the weight reduction play into where you're trying to get as far as taking your game to the next level? Um, I think it's, I mean, not just, you know, on the field. I think it's for me when I, you know, walking around or, you know, I think when I get more in, uh, later into my career, you know, like I said, having guys like my uncle around that says and have experience, you know, especially playing in the trenches, it's like, you know, all that weight on them joints and stuff like that, I think take a toll on your body. And um, I think, you know, if I could keep playing at a consistent level, um, I mean, weight that, you um, I think that it helped me, especially later in the season, from getting even banged up or whatever it may be. And I think that just, you know, with me, you know, I feel good when I'm light. I feel good, um, you know, because I feel I still feel strong. I still feel like myself. Uh, so I think just me getting down and being consistent at, you know, right around, you know, maybe 295, but right around 300 in that range, I think that would feel good for me and uh, just being able you know, to help the team the best way I can by staying healthy. So, how was the Von year? Miller, uh, the, the pass rushing summit? How was that for you? Oh, it was great. You know, I, you know, of course, you know, with with Von Miller, he'll tell you that you know, the, the we didn't do really drills. You know, um, I walked through a lot of stuff with um, D. Ware, but you know, just to be around them guys, you know, Calais Campbell, and um, all them older vets. You know, just to hear their perspective on the way they rush and the way they attack guys, I think that was good for me because especially being a young guy, you know, I'm I'm there with a lot of guys who have 100 sacks. I think it was like three or four guys that in the 100 sack range. And, of course, it's a pass rush summer, so, you know, I'm all ears to it. And also, we just went on the field. It was also 
you know, we did went to the film room. So I think that was my biggest thing to get around them guys to see how they think, you know, um, how, what they, how do they approach, you know, certain blockers if it's a jump setter or whatever it may be. So I, I had a great time just to learn. You know, I took a lot of notes. I, t- I made sure I had me a notebook and pen. So I took a lot of notes from them guys, and you know, it was just great to be around all them vets. So. Where'd you play at last year, Jeff? Um, I was, I, th- I would say I was um, up like 312, 315. You know, I wanted to come in a little lighter, but that wasn't the case, I guess, um, all season. And I think that's where I said the consistency of, with my weight, I guess, watch what I eat later in the season will help me out as well. Aaron Donald's been the standard for a decade uh, on the defensive line. Do you think, in your mind, you can be that next guy? I mean, everyone played the game different, and um, like I said, when I, when a lot of guys, and I get asked a question like that all the time, you know, I'm I'm my own player. I, you know, I feel like I played a game different than Aaron Donald or whoever the next guy may be. So I think that just when, when I'm playing the game, you know, I want to, I want to be around the ball. I don't want to just make sacks or tackle for loss. I want to chase the ball down the field. And a lot of people ask, how do you separate yourself? I say, turn on the field. And, and see that, like I'm, I'm, I, I like to chase the ball. I like to be around the ball. Like Coach Drabe already say, you never know. You know, big guy running to the ball always c- create, you know, good things. Good things happen, and that's fumbles or whatever it may be. So, you know, pick up a fumble, somebody knock the ball out. So I think with me personally, you know, I try to separate myself by doing the other things from other, that I see. You know, like I said, I much respect to all them guys. You know that, like Aaron Donald. You know, um, you know he. He listed as the best best player in the league, and you know, quite frankly, you know, the way he played the game and disrupt the game is different than everyone else. So, like I said, I, I consider myself as a different player, you know, um, than Aaron Donald, of course. So, like I said, my my job is to be the best version of Jeffrey Simmons for the Tennessee Titans. What did you, you pay think? Much attention of? to the contract extension that he got, though. I mean, we all see that, you know, it's in the media, but you know, like I said, when it's time for the talk contract, you know. I don't want to be a part of it. You know, that's why I got a team around me to handle that. Like I got a, like I said, the team that I have, you know, I know that they want the best for me. And, you know, like I said, that's, it's not in my control. You know, that's for them to handle. I think that's why they get paid the way they do to go talk to them guys upstairs. So, um, like I said, I have a team in place to, you know, when it's time to talk contract, they'll be ready to talk Jeff, to. Who's the team? reason, who's Jeff, the that, team, that Jeff? Uh, as far as we know now, uh, do you think you'll start training camp on time? Is there any reason to think you wouldn't start training camp My on time? My goal is to be here when they tell us report. And, you know, like I said, I see you guys at training camp. I'm, I said, I'm, I'm been on the plan with Coach Vray, and they're telling me, like I said, when it's time to report, my plan is to be here. We've done something like KV was talking about. He did that. Uh, just yeah. to make sure that consistency stays throughout the season? Yeah, I think with me, like I um, I think my biggest thing is just being able to, I guess, not cheat with it. You know, you have them days where you just want to say, forget it. You know, especially late in the season where you're like, All right, I'm feeling good at this weight. It's no sense of trying to do extra. So I think my thing is just staying strict on myself, you know, because I think been going trying to uh, stay strict or, you know, having a dot, I don't think, I wouldn't call it a dot. You know, I, I call it just letting stuff go, you know. Um, or, you know, if it's snacks or whatever it may be, you know, just um, putting the right thing in your body, you know, not just for football, but, you know, your health. So I think that's my biggest thing. How can I just stay, you know, consistent with what I put in my body? A guy who loves ball and talked about how much you love ball, how, how difficult is it for you? You have the plan, but I, you want to be out there, right? How difficult is it? To I mean, it's, it's always difficult not being on the field, no matter if it's OTAs, minicamp, or whatever it may be. You know, it's always to be, always great to be around your teammates. And I think, you know, um, building a team, not just on the field. You know, I think it's all about, you know, the rela- especially the relationship, you know, with your teammates. It's in the building, you know, in the locker room, and not just at the football facility. How can we get together? You know, we've been. I talked to a couple of guys this week. You know, how can what can we do to, especially you know, on um, defense? Because that's where I'm playing at. How can we get together on defense, especially the front four, to bond more? Because that's one of the things I talked to. Um, you know, some of the vets at Von Miller camp. I was talking to Justin Houston. He was like, he was just telling me, man, y'all got something special. You know, y'all got, you don't want to lose that because y'all don't jail together. And, I, and that hit me because I'm like, 
you know, we do have a special group. But, you know, we're not going to gel all together just on the football field. How can we, you know, uh, get get away from the building, join together, you know, fellowship together outside of football? So, And I think that's, you know, where that come in play. You know, I want to be on the field true enough, but, you know, it's not about just being on the field. And um, I think that's what I've been doing since I'm not on the field, um, bonding with them guys in the locker room and, you know, hopefully outside of the building. This team- Did it bother you what happened with AJ where a contract was a part? That not be in here anymore, that whole situation. Honestly, man, that's I'm my own player. You know, I'm we're gonna miss AJ around here, but I mean, that's that don't have nothing to do with me. Honestly, I think my goal is to do my job, and I don't play receiver, I play D line. So, you know, I'm still here, I gotta still be a leader for this team and just play my role. Uh, uh, Christian, uh, you're only going into your third year, but all of a sudden, you're one of the more experienced guys in the room all of a sudden. How does it feel to be maybe giving some advice to a lot of the, the younger guys and less experienced guys? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it's, it's cool. You know, it's a cool thing, cool feeling. Uh, uh, it's cool. I say that because, uh, you know, like you said, it was a new system for me coming in these first two years. So just being an older guy, you know, I, I look forward to that, you know, because it's something, you know, that I needed. Uh, KB, uh, Kenny, when he was here, those guys helped me. So uh, I look forward to it. Uh, and I'm just here, you know, to compete with all the other guys. You know, that's the only way we're going to get better is if we competing. So, I mean, it's a fun thing, you know, to help those guys out. Have you, you found you yourself to guys, like, having to be more vocal? Mm-hmm. And if so, is that something you're, you're, you've, you're comfortable with or, or something mm-hmm. you're trying to get accustomed to? Yeah, uh, I'm still getting accustomed to it. Uh, just as far as, like, being off the field, on the field, you know, I'm vocal. You know, I just have to make the checks. That's what the game, you know, had a lot had, makes me do. But off the field, you know, I'm definitely, you know, still getting accustomed to it. Uh, like I said, just talking to those guys, you know, and uh, just fixing corrections that we have, you know, as a DB group, you know, uh, motivating those guys, you know, just keeping them up, you know, letting them know that's a process, but, you know, they have to be ready. What was your plan, maybe, Christian, mm-hmm. your mission, maybe this off season? You still got several weeks before camp starts, mm-hmm. but what was your plan coming in at the start and maybe how do you feel like it's going? Uh, like, uh, well, like you said, just being more vocal, you know, being a uh, – Taking on a bigger role for the team, you know, and uh, playing my part and also just helping those guys, you know, uh, catch up to speed. Uh, for the most part, most of the guys, you know, we play, we got a, a pretty a group that's played together. But like you said, Caleb hasn't played much. Roger, you know, those other guys, you know, just trying to make sure that they're caught up, you know, once camp comes and making sure that, you know, we can catch this thing rolling early so we don't have to make adjustments, you know, when the season comes. In OTA's mini camp, you've worked on from a technique standpoint mm-hmm. uh, that, you're, that you're focused on. Uh, just being more patient, uh, just um, trying to um, take on a bigger role as far as um, reading the offense, you know, once they come out in the formation, you know, getting my pre-snap reads so I could play fast once the ball uh, snaps. You know, like I said, I wanted to uh, be around the ball more this uh, season, so uh, that's, what's, that's what it's going to take, getting lined up, knowing what's coming to me, uh, pre-snap, that way I could play faster. What do you think of the depth of the cornerback mm-hmm. group now? Yeah, uh, the depth is uh, pretty good. You know, uh, we got a young group, and uh, everybody's you know coming in, you know, ready to compete. Uh, guys are trying to get a starting spot, and just find their roles on the team. So uh, I think uh, I like the group that we have. Uh, it's very competitive, and uh, like I said, guys that uh, want to have a starting role. Rogers, another guy like you who played SEC competition. How, mm-hmm. how much does that help going against yeah. high class of, of you know caliber receivers week mm-hmm. in week out? Does that help make the jump? Uh, I mean, it's a pretty easy jump, uh, I would say. It's not easy, but it's easy because you played against some of the guys that you're going against. But um, he knows that he's going to play against, you know, big physical receivers. He's done that already. Uh, the main thing, you know, is just getting the defense down, you know, and making sure you can play fast without thinking. So uh, I don't think he'll have a problem, you know, with the competition that he's going against because he's played against some of those guys. What do you do between now and, and the time camp starts? Uh, you saying what I'm doing now? Uh, what do you do maybe to kind of get yourself geared up? Uh, just making sure, you know, the body is, you know, 100% healthy. You know, I want to go into the season, you know, healthy. Uh, with a clear mind, you know, just focus strictly on football. Um, and that's going to be allow me to, you know, play fast, you know, play in the defense. And uh, just meet with my trainers back at home so uh, I could be in shape for that 17 where, where, game. Where is that? Where do where you train? Um, so I have a few guys back at home in New Orleans, NXT, uh, and I have my trainer, Mo Wells, in Austin. Christian, how do you get the build off the way you finished last year as a defense and mm-hmm. carried over and be even better this year? Yeah. Um, yeah, we all feel like, you know, we were decent. You know, it wasn't good enough on the defensive side. So uh, we see that there's potential, 
you know, we see what we brought back this year, mostly everybody really. So uh, we just want to keep that going. You know, we know we could be a special group. So um, that's just our challenge to us every day. Um, we're not worried about last year, but we know what we got, you know, the potential that we have. If you reach that potential, how good can you be? Shit, go all the way. That's, that's our goal, you know. Um, that's the best, the best defense usually gets to the Super Bowl. So um, that, I think that's the potential. What kind of is there a challenge? And we've talked to some of the guys up front and front seven, and they talk about how that group, you know, really came into its own last year. What about you guys in the back? Like, what's, yeah. what's the feeling there? Yeah, um, like I said, uh, I feel like the last year that we had with us playing together, I feel like that'd be a big plus for us, you know, because you got to have a lot of communication. You know, guys are coming in, everybody has a different style, even though you have to play together. But I feel like we all have a feel for each other. We have a great feel for the defense with all of us having a year under our belt. So uh, I feel like that would be, that's very big for us, you know, uh, in the back end that'll help us. You know, I know the front seven gonna take care of their jobs, but it was some games, you know, where we had a bus in the secondary. So I feel like that's helpful for us, you know, coming into this season where we had that experience. And we could talk about those things and we just know where everybody's gonna be at. How do you feel about the culture of this team? Mm -hmm. uh, we still we still building our culture, you know. We got some new guys in, uh, but I mean, I, I like where we're headed at. You know, a lot of guys came in for a training camp, you know, just to get a feel. I mean, mini camp just to get a feel, you know, of what the culture is, and uh, I think we're headed in the right direction. Um, but you know, we still building that um, throughout this time while we're here. That he's on board with a plan with you and everybody else here to, you know, at this point during this mini camp. But is, is it all designed to help him be? at his freshest come training camp in the season at this point? No, just doing exactly what we ask him to do. Like everybody else, everybody's got a different plan, and that's where we're at right now. What is it that he can accomplish, you know, being in the film room as opposed to, you know, not having the field work like some of the other guys? Well, we always ask guys that aren't, um, you know, practicing to be doing um, and working just as hard. Um, that's going to go on through training camp throughout the season. There's going to be times where, where guys aren't with us on the field, but we, we're going to need them um, on Sunday or whenever they can come back. So, um, you know, just, just staying up on the installation. You know, some guys have, have gotten, um, you know, eight weeks of it. Some guys haven't. Um, I would say that the guys that haven't been here have gotten caught up. You know, they got caught up pretty quickly. Can the players that go from the time they leave here until camp starts, what would your message be on how to get? Well, this is the most critical time of the off season. We talk about the nine weeks of OTAs, but, you know, these next five weeks will be the most critical time uh, from the end of the season because, um, you know, we'll have the rookies here, Jim. We talked about that yesterday. You asked about that yesterday. Um, you know, so Frank and, and everybody in the weight room will be working hard uh, with them. It'll be hot. That'll be great for these guys to get out and, and get some of that and train in that. You know, but then everybody kind of goes away. And so you don't want to lose what we've put in um, and, and then come back and be ready to go mentally and physically. With Traylon where <clears> he <throat> is at this point, is there a separate plan for him from the other rookies? Or how are you going about just getting him ready to go this offseason? Well, he'll be here on Monday. He'll be here tomorrow. Last year, you talked about how guys like Hilliard and Foreman had come in and how motivated they were by having been out of the league and on the street. Do you sense some of that same motivation and hunger in Josh Malone as he's coming here? Uh, yeah, I think so. You know, I think that, uh, you know, we'd all, you know, we're all trying to work as hard now that we have a job as when we didn't. And that's that's my responsibility to make sure that, you know, we're not getting too comfortable and uh, complacent uh, because we do have a lot of those guys that have, like you mentioned, that have come in here uh, Buster Screen and you know Texans didn't you know they they parted ways with with um, you know um, Zach you know with Cunningham. There's just a lot of guys that have been whether they're undrafted or you know were somewhere else that um, you know things didn't work out that they've come here and you know take advantage of whatever opportunity that that they uh, that they've gotten. So you know Josh would be you know one of those guys in that category. Mike, from the outset, then two three guys here in the last month or so. That You know, the only way that they would stand out is that they would be um, be able to handle the installation um, quickly, um, make improvements, and, and again, physically, I think that that would be hard to determine. Um, you know, so we'll we'll reserve judgment for you know when we start playing. Mike, you stuff beyond 
beyond the operational stuff, what kind of strides has has Malik made um, in in revising the things that you guys want to revise? Well, I think there were some good, quick decisions yesterday in the red zone. I thought that there was, um, you know, did a nice job holding the safety's eyes and you know delivering ball on time. I, you know, again, I it's it's hard, and I I watched it again after we finished, but. You know, it, it's hard in the jog through. We're doing the jog through to just get, you know, these plays in. And so I think that the timing isn't, co- it's not fair for the receivers and the quarterbacks. And, you know, and that's on me just to try to take care of those guys. The closer you get to the goal line, you know, guys are going to start becoming more competitive. And I just reminded them, like, like, let's just get these plays in. Let's get them installed. And, you know, so I was conscious of the pace. You know, we don't have pads on and it's tight quarters. And so I think some of the timing, you know, down there wasn't wasn't very good, and they did probably you shouldn't even be throwing some of those balls. I just don't want to create bad habits. But yesterday there were some really really good, quick, decisive decisions in the red zone. How about mechanically, footwork, throwing motion? Well, just trying to get some things. You know, obviously when you progress through and you work from from one read to the next, everything's got to be in tune. You know, you got to be able to to move your feet and, and get your shoulders set, and then. You know, you teach them that, and then at some point in time they're going to go out and and play and and manufacture some plays on their own and just just be talented and be instinctive. And so there's a fine line between um, both of those. With the occasional sidearm throw or some of that impromptu stuff he does, or would you like to be more consistent? No, I mean, we don't want to coach robots. I mean, we certainly want to make sure that, that we're sound in what we're doing, but there's going to be times in every position where you know, guys are going to, you know, if, if Harold comes under or gets a sack or, you know, Bud runs around the back of the pocket and gets a strip sack. I mean, some of these things, and we've been through it as we're trying to create these poised and instinctive players that, um, you know, you got to give them opportunity to make plays, but they can't, you know, it can't be reckless and, and affect, you know, what the entire team's doing. So that's just one example of a guy that feels like, you know, hey, there, I saw the guy jump up and I needed to change my arm angle. Um, you know, we're, we're going to try to coach them and, and teach them, but then they go out and play and, you know, make sure that the results, um, you know, are there. Mike, Amani Booker, what do you see as being the, the next step for him after, a, you know, a full year as a starter? Well, I mean, I think just continue to, to improve and take some ownership and, you know, continue to, to cover and, you know, when you have to get matched up with some bigger tight ends and, you know, we ask a lot of them and, you know, I think it was a, you know, he does a lot for us. He plays different roles and, you know, blitzes and plays in the back part of the field. There, he's pretty versatile. Is there anything you say to the rookies before you all break, um, just preparing them for this first time before they go into fall camp and just kind of giving them? I mean, we'll advice. have conversations with them the next couple of weeks. I'll be in here just watching them and, you know, seeing how they do. And, you know, now is not the time to, to go to the Bahamas and, you know, take long vacations. Um, How big will the reminder be on that with the, with regard to the, the soft tissue injuries that we've talked about over time and you've talked about this being a crucial period on that? And I think you have to be able to train. You have to train in this heat. You have to stay hydrated. You have to go out there and, you know, train the way that you're going to practice and practice the way that you're going to play. So um, conscious that the volume that they're going to be doing in the off season and those next couple weeks are, are there, the speed, you know, we're able to track their speed. We were trying to get everybody up to, you know, at least 90% of their max game speed once a week throughout the off season. Showed them the numbers, communicated with the players, so that all of a sudden we're just not asking them to, to to run fast and and then you know shock their system. So, you know, we took time and we have you see all these things that are set up uh, so that we can track it. Um, if they're not hitting it in practice, we get them over to the side and, and get them that speed work and. And hopefully they're conscious of that while they're away from here. Over the last three years in the postseason, fans have very high playoff expectations. But what are your playoff expectations for this year? Um, you know, first make them, and and then uh, and win. It's a lot of the red zone drills, and Austin Hooper specifically. From what you've seen here, as well as maybe even before, what, in your opinion, what's made him an effective red zone? He's player? got a good catch radius. He really, you've seen those ten contested throws where. He's doing what we ask him to do and go and attack the football. Um, he's athletic. I mean, he's not the fastest tight end, um, but I don't think you have to be fast to, to get open. I think you have to be crafty. I think you have to, to be athletic and, and, and use different speeds, use route craft, use 
you know, different moves that, you know, match coverage that, that are going to help you get open. How has it been getting uh, this group's biggest challenge going into camp? Um, probably just coming in shape, you know. Mike, this has kind of been a construction zone for two and a half years now. Is uh, uh, light at the end of the tunnel at this point? And how hopeful are you that the third field? Yeah, no, that, those guys are working hard. It's it, it's going to be great. It's, um, you know, we're not on the best, you know, land here, but it's going to be amazing. I think that that should be um, ready to go here in, in middle of July. Hopefully transition over here, start working on this one um, at some point in time and, you know, give us um, – you know the the best surface that we can possibly have in this in this location, but we didn't mind the construction one bit. We have amazing offices, um, great place to teach. You know our coaches are right by the um, the building. We thank you know Miss Amy and, and and her family all the time. And we have the space. We have our entire organization. I've gotten to meet people that we haven't seen and to what we've hired during COVID or before COVID that I never got a chance to meet. And now they're in the same building, and and we have an, our organization is right here. So are you saying you'll have two fields during camp, or are you going to do this one sometime down the road? Uh, sometime down the road, I think, eventually. We're not going to do it during camp. No, we'll still have our three fields. And then the, and the bubble in there. Thanks, guys. Okay.